Hey everybody, it's HR, and welcome back to d d Talk. Okay guys, on this episode of d d Talk, we're going to continue on from last week, and we're going to talk more about classes. Now, last week we talked about wizards, this week we're going to talk about monks. Now, for those of you who don't know, a monk is basically a person who uses the fist and the ch- and the key in order to fight. They don't use magic. Well, kind of. It's a bit hard to explain. For monks, magic isn't really w- the same as what magic is to us. They have what's called ki. Ki is a life energy to them. It's sort of the energy that flows through them and powers the mystical arts. It keeps them going and keeps them fighting, basically, every time. So, yeah. But that's sort of what these guys do. They're more punch-based, you know? They don't use weapons. Some of them do, actually. Some of them do use some weapons, but that's only for Disney monks. Most of the time, they use their fists. And even then, when they use their fists, they get a lot of punches. The same may be asking, why do monks use their fists? That's a very good question. The reason why is the fact that a monk's deadliest weapon are their hands. They can use a bow stab, they can use other monk weapons, sometimes they use a glaive as well, but a monk's favorite weapons are their hands because that's where they get the most punches. If they're not using another weapon, they can use the hands to basically attack an enemy a bunch of times and gain a lot of uh, a lot of damage in that one attack. Now, what's so special about monks? Well, the one thing special about monks is also the fact that they have very high speed. They're very fast, I would say. Not just for punching, but also with running and everything else. Their movement is very high. Uh, when they increase in levels, their movement goes up by 10. It's when we just on level, I should say. When we just on level, the movement goes up by 10 and it continues onward. As long as they're not wearing a shield or any armor, they can continue increasing that level again and again and again. And it gets higher and higher. It's actually pretty amazing, you know? And also the fact that they're actually pretty smart as well. Considering the fact that they have spent a lot of time studying these martial arts, they actually are pretty smart and know how to strategize. Now you're probably wondering, what's the downside to this class? As the downside of the last class was very obvious, what's the downside to this one? Now the downside of this class is the fact that it's so poor from other classes. It means that it's sort of, uh, it, takes bit, it takes a bit from fighter, takes a bit from, uh, from rogue, and also takes a bit from uh, many other classes. But it doesn't get the full advantage of them, I should say, you know? You know, while you guys get more attacks, while you get a lot of attacks, like fighter, they don't deal that much damage per attack, I should say. You know, and while yes, they get the sneak like a rogue, they don't also get they also don't get the tools, the thieves tools that a rogue uses to sneak better and to get into places. Basically, they're very limited. They can do a lot, but they can't. They don't have a lot to do. I should say. Now, one of the fun things about this, the fact that it does start off this, it does start off pretty slow, but as you get le- more and more leveled up, you do sort of reach that point where you can do cool things. Like, if you've ever seen those old school karate movies, then you know what I'm talking about. These things are basically, uh, do things that seemingly impossible. Like, for instance, catch an arrow when it comes right at them. Or even, uh, run up walls. Or, again, seemingly punch a guy 50 times in 6 seconds. They're very fast and they're very keen. And that's what you can do at level 3, actually. When you reach level 3 of a monk, you can actually get a skill called Deflect Missiles. Which basically means that you can catch a missile that's coming towards you, or should I say an arrow, you catch an arrow that's coming towards you and sort of block it, or just uh, stop it, you know? It's pretty it's pretty cool when that happens, because it gives you a badass moment. Now these are guys are still monks, meaning that while yes, you can fight all you want, they still embody this sort of natural presence of peace, of calmness, of inner, of this inner peace. Basically, they have this natural embodiment of like, yes, I have found a way to keep calm, and to basically remain happy. Remain pure, I should say, not happy, but remain sound, safe in mind. So so a lot of times when they, when they reach high, when they reach that certain level, they can not be frightened, they cannot be scared. They can do things that basically, they can control their temper, their mood, I should say. Now, that's a pretty cool aspect of the character, you know? Now you're probably wondering, what should I focus on ability score-wise when I'm choosing this class? You know, when you, when you roll for ability scores, what should, uh, what should I put my highest number into? And really, this is going to be very important, because if it's not obvious enough, you want to put your highest number not to strength, intelligence, or, or constitution. You want to put it into dexterity and wisdom. 
because that's what the monk uses the most. They use like deity and wisdom to help fight and help uh, help plan out attacks. You know, again, for speed and for strategy. This is what they do a lot of the times. Now, if you want to choose your own race for this, and again, this is up to you. It's based on your character's backstory. But again, if you want to choose a race that better suits a monk, you can always go with these ones right here. You've got heel dwarves. you got stout halflings. you got a wood elf. And then you have variant humans. Now, regular humans, variant humans. They're very different. They got a tail, maybe. It's surprisingly not that different from each other, actually, you know? It makes sense, you know? I mean, each one has their own uh, place as to, uh, physical-wise, why you would go for a monk with those, you know? Uh, the Wood Elf seemingly is more agile and seemingly can move around faster, while the Dwarves and the Halfling are more intelligent, are more wisdom-based. They, they know how to work around and how to come up with strategies. The Human One, I... That's what I'm kind of understand about. Maybe it's just the fact that it's a variant human. It's a, it's different, you know. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> now on to appearance. Now monks usually have a certain way of dressing. Now usually when you picture a monk, you usually picture what you see in the thumbnail. You know, uh, the whole the gi and the headband and basically them going ha, you know. But that can be and that cannot be what monks are. Now some people are very adamant on adding clothes to a character. Some people don't want that. I've seen many shirtless characters and it's funny. That's usually for barbarians, but we'll get back to that in another video. Uh, but with monks, you do want to have a certain way of, uh, of simple lifestyle, simple clothing, I should say, you know? You, you don't want armor on you because that guy can, that can sort of d help, uh, sort of uh, defeat your movement, sort of drag you down. You don't want a shield because, again, that can drag you down and slow you down, but also it doesn't add to your AC a lot as well. Uh, you sort of want light clothes, or hell, if you want, you can go even, you can even go shirtless if you want. That's up to you and your character design. You just want you just want clothes that sort of make you go faster, sort of make your character flow through the air more. And that's what a lot of monks do. That's what that's what you can do as well. Okay, I okay, really recommend that. Okay, now let's move on to subclasses. If you're about subclasses, the subclasses for this one are not the way of magic, but the ways. They're basically ways of. Uh, a fighting you can go into, uh, so different mindsets, I guess you could say, you know? There's a way of mercy, there's a way of ascent dragon, there's a way of shadow, there's a way of astral self, it goes on and on and on. And these are the subclasses for them. They basically are different, uh, different findings of the mindsets that your monk can go into. And it helps, uh, bring in that character, that foot, so way you can do this. Now, each subclass is different on their own, and each one focuses on a different region, you know. So, uh, way of Shadow is more stealthy, and also you can use your shadows to help you fight. Way of Astral Self is where you more or less are using your your Astral Projection to figure out your enemies and see you spy on them. Uh, and the list goes on and on. But if you want to look more of this up, then please go ahead and do so. But that's what these guys do. Uh, they basically keep on looking for different styles of fighting, you know. Different ways... Uh, different teachings, I should say, different teachings, and uh, that's sort of what you want to look for in this class. Now it's that time, so I should probably tell you a story about a monk. Uh, now to be fair, I have not played a monk. This is one of the few classes I have not played, and the reason why is because I just haven't had the ability to make a character for this class yet. I've been trying to, I've been trying to make a character for it, but I just could never think of a character that would fit this class. Every other class, I've got a character I can think I could fit I could fit them you know but this one I don't have because I just don't know if I can do it the best I can do is think of one that's like like a peace loving one like who, who, a monk who's a pacifist doesn't want to fight only only does it when he has to uh, sort of like uh, Aang from Avatar you know he fights in self defense but not to basically uh, he doesn't fight just because but I don't want to do that because one that makes the game boring and two, my teammates would hate me then because they'd be like, why aren't you fighting with us? And they'd be like, and I'd be tell them, I can't. It goes against my moral code. I seem like an asshole. I did have a friend who played as a monk and he actually had a pretty good backstory. Uh, he played as a tabaxi monk and his backstory is actually pretty cool. He, he had this air of, of regret and basically, and basically uh, calmness around him. Like, like you can tell that something happened to him in his past that he deeply regretted, 
but that he but that even though he even though he hasn't found a way to get over it yet, he's trying. He's trying his hardest to basically keep in that sense of everything's fine and everything's gonna be fine. Basically, the whole that calmness of that like everything's good right now. You know, he, he, you know his thing is the fact that. <laughs> Now, he was the damage dealer of the party. He did a lot of damage and a lot of turns. But the funny thing was the fact that we had him as our tank, you know? He, not a tank. He was our damage dealer. So he is basically our axe, I guess. And we, a lot of what we did was, we, a lot of us were magic users as well. So imagine the, the, uh, <laughs> the shock we felt when he ran off into the woods and my character followed him. When I found him, he had this white glaze over his eyes. And from what my the what the DM told me, he he said that to my character, it looked like pure hatred. Like it was like pure anger. And it looked he was in a trance as well. Next thing you know, he's his character's beating up my character. And I was like freaking out because I was like, holy shit, I'm gonna die! I was like, I should not have followed him. He even told us, don't follow me. But I had to because I was worried about him. So my character was almost died there. Thankfully, I was able to knock him over a cliff into the water below us. So that way he didn't fucking kill me. His character didn't die either. His character immediately woke up and basically got out of that trance. It also helped with the fact that my character jumped down there to help him. Because I, as soon as I knocked him over, I realized, I went, oh, okay, good, it's over. Wait. Shit. And jumped in. <laughs> ah! You see, apparently, the, well, the reason why this happened was because his backstory was that he had moments of blind fury. He used to go into this blind fury, this, this white-hot anger, but this trance of where he would kill anything in his path. And it led to him killing his his temple of a, a fellow monks, you know. He then left and ran and eventually found something that helped calm him down. Some medicine, I think, that helped calm him down, but only for a short period of time. It, it basically he had, to take, he had to take every now and then. And if he ran out, he wouldn't be able to uh, he wouldn't be able to hold back the anger. Guess what happened when? When I chased him, he ran out of medicine by that point. That's the reason why he didn't want us coming at him, because he knew he ran out of medicine and he had to get away from us. So that's what happened. That's the reason why he seemed so he seemed full of regret and calmness. It's because he had killed his entire village, but the medicine he was taking was making him more and more calm than ever. Again, it's a fascinating backstory, and I applaud him. We eventually got eventually got him to forgive himself and he eventually gained this sort of respect back. He grieved. He lost us. He felt confident in us help, helping us out. Uh, but but yeah, but yeah, that's the character that my my friend made, and he he, he had fun with it. He loved it, you know. We we love this character because he had, he had a lot of fun making it. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll see you guys next video. Okay, next time we'll talk about more magic users. In fact, I kind of feel like we're gonna do a little bit more, a uh, <laughs> little, little bit more uh, technology based, shall we? <laughs> anyway, guys, see you guys next one. Okay, bye. It's the Battle of Mind Flare. <laughs> bye.